What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I got my special host with me, QB Willie. What's going on, man? What up, player? What up? What's good? All right, all right. Let's see. Hold on here. My my thing's a little bit slow here. Let me see if I could uh fix this real quick. All right, cool, cool, cool beans. All right, we're here. Um, yeah, man. So, um, how you been, bro? Been good. Uh, just been kicking back. Studying a lot of stocks during this quarantine time. Unfortunately, can't travel the way I want. You know, that's out of pause. But I'm not tripping. You know, brother loves peace and freedom. Mm. So I can't complain too much. Yeah. So what's, your, what's, what's one of the places you usually travel to? Well, Mexico is the frequent place that I go to because it's right next door. Uh-huh. But I had a trip planned to go to Lima for what ten days, Peru. And uh, unfortunately, with the whole coronavirus situation, I had to reschedule that trip. Uh, Airbnb gave me a full refund, and then Orbitz gave me flight credit. So I might try to head back down there later on in, in the year. But there's just so many options for me to go. It's like, man. You know, I want to go when the weather is nice and, you know, when there's events that, that are going to be um, basically scheduled for that time. So I might have to actually do it next year, which is not a big deal. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, listen, I don't know based on your experience and, um, you know, what's going on with you right now currently in the state of mind when it comes down to women and dating, but just out of curiosity, man, um, I've been hearing a couple of fellas, right? Mm -hmm. And the ones, these are fellas that normally don't really travel as much, but they're just in the States during this whole quarantine situation. I've been hearing a lot of men saying that they've been experience experiencing the, uh, sort of like a, a, a different side effect of American women and how they're being treated. I mean, I've been hearing from men that they've been like American women have been a lot more humble, more nice, uh, more horny. Uh, a lot of these women, a lot of these women tend to, uh, you know, kind of, I guess, lower their standards down for just the incy wincy little bit, you know, because it's, it's quarantine. I mean, listen, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I've had women that call me from the past that I haven't even talked to in years. You know what I mean? Hit me up saying, Hey, what's going on? Hey, how are you? I'm like, who? And I'm like, looking at the phone, like I delete numbers, bro. Like I don't keep shit on the phone. You know what I mean? So if it's like women that tried me before in the past, women I probably met out on the street that, you know, just was on some uh, flaky shit. Cause we all know we've been through women who flake all the time when you meet them, when you uh, meet them on the street, meet them in nightclubs or just, you know, anywhere, you know, women just have a tendency of just flaking a lot. So usually the flake ones, I just, you know, delete their numbers. I don't keep their, their numbers stashed in my phone. But my question is, uh, you know, it's kind of just weird, man, because it's like for the last two to three weeks, uh, I've been getting hit up from random chicks, like girls that I've talked to in the past that, you know, I don't even really talk to and I don't even pay no mind to. I just kind of like, hey, whatever, you know, because like, they, they used to play little games and just, you know, just be on some dumb shit. And they would hit me up like, mm, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm chilling. What's up? <laughs> uh, nothing. I'm just bored. Uh, it's like, oh, now you're bored. But all this time, though, when I was working and I had money in my pocket, and the economy was actually at its peak. And, you know, you had a lot of thousands of likes on Facebook. I wasn't, you know, on your top list of guys you wanted to talk to. I was kind of like, I pushed away. And there was times where I actually would hit these women up and say hi, you know, see, you know, just check in and check out. You know what I mean? Just say what's going on with them. I'll never get a reply back, so I just leave it alone. Now, right. all of a sudden, I feel like. The stock market has gone up, and also men's value has gone up for some reason. Uh, I mean, do you feel that? Do you feel that same way? I mean, since this quarantine uh, situation has been happening, it seems like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of freaky beautiful women that are lonely right now. For some reason. Of course, yeah. Uh, throughout my social media and girls that I'm mainly just friends with, 
like they have basically told me like, oh my gosh, like I can't go out. You know, there's a curfew. Um, some are not actually working. So it's a real difficult time for them. Um, I noticed like, for example, and I'm not on any of these dating sites or anything like that, but I guess Tinder has like a quarantine together. So it's encouraging video chats. Really? Text message, yes. And it's like having the logo to wash your hands. Oh, wow. Right. And so basically the whole quarantine has, you know, put uh, an effect, you know, from women to date because now their options are limited. So they're falling back on guys that used to show them interest, um, that they would possibly go out or maybe flake, you know, for the most part. So it's like you're the plan B, plan C, plan D option. That's what's going on right now. Yeah, and you know, I don't like to sell myself short, but I just got to keep it real, man. When it comes down to these type of women, man, we all know as men, we got to pull rabbit out our freaking hats and do all types of acrobatic tricks in order for us to, you know, win the attention of these type of women because we already know from <laughs> I mean for the most part that most of these women are constantly getting hit up on IG, Facebook, Snapchat, um Instagram, like all these <coughs> excuse me, all these social media websites. And you start to think to yourself, well, you know, why all of a sudden you know, has has the pussy stock market dropped or some shit? Like, you know what I'm saying? Is there a decline? And it, it, I just feel like some are just more vulnerable. And then you just got others that are very distant. Like, you got some that you used to talk. Like, it's so weird. Like, mm -hmm. the ones that I used to talk, like, the ones that I talk to on a regular are acting OD funny. Like, I got the corona. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you got ones that are... um that I've never even talked to in a long time. And then all of a sudden they hitting me up and I'm just like, right. well, what the hell is going on, man? It's just a weird funky energy going on in this world. I mean, do you kind of feel that way? Yeah. Um, for me, like I said, it doesn't affect me that much. Um, simply I really limit my dating here in the States. If it's not a one night stand, I, I really don't want to talk to you. I don't want to date you. But I noticed <laughs> this girl who I haven't talked to in a long time. And I met her at this bar in Long Beach. You know, we had that we made out or whatever. She's a teacher, by the way. And she randomly requested me on Facebook. And I'm just like, oh, shit, I haven't, you know, seen you like literally in a year and a half. And mm. she's, like, she's like, yeah, when you come down here, you know, to Long Beach, uh, hit me up or whatever. Let's hang out. And I'm like, what? So it is a little trippy for the most part. Do you uh, think that it might be some sort of a... Uh, it's a tension. Is a, is a decoy? Is she trying to... You think she's trying to get something out of you? Well, she's one of those type of girls... Uh, Surprisingly, she's a Latina with no kids, but she's she's actually older. She's 30. I think she's like 33, 34. Slim mm -hmm. body, though. I, would, I wouldn't put her in that scale. I mean, that's nice. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would give her a good solid seven. Oh, okay. um, right. She just, you know, doesn't have enough booty back there, but that's okay. I can still work with it. But she... She is attractive looking, um, yeah. but again, I, I find it weird. Like you hit me up literally a year and a half later, and <laughs> if it wasn't for her friend kind of cock blocking the situation, um, you know, I could have took her back to the pad to, to to finish the night off. So she knows that. Um, so. When it's convenient for her and convenient for myself, we'll, we'll make that happen. We'll score that touchdown. So let me ask you something, man. You talk about cop blocking situations, man. Give us some examples of some cop blocking situations you've been through. <laughs> so you can oh, I've, been through a, I've been through a lot. I've been through cop blocking situations with your homies. Cop oh, man. Blocking, right. Cop uh, blocking situations with other females. 
but a prime example is basically um, the latest one that I can remember when I went to go visit my cousin in New Orleans, actually about a year ago, it was in February before Mardi Gras, I uh, met this cool snow bunny from Colorado. Ooh, snow bunny. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, she, yeah. Was, she was bad. She, she, she was solid. She, okay. again, she was a little older too. And when I, when I mean by older, I yeah. mean like in the 30s, young 30s. You know, I go for women for the most part, decent looking to their mid 20s. That's that's my preference. But anyways, um, we were vibing. My cousin was with me and he's kind of one of those guys that's like a pookie or Ray Ray. So we went to more of a classier, diverse place. Mm. You know, I was walking around on bourbon. He had me and in, in all that hood shit. You know what I mean? You know, motherfuckers was looking like Rick Ross and Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh shit! So they so they weren't really dressed for the proper occasion. They were just like really. He he, he wasn't he wasn't. But you know, we both had on fitted hats or whatever. Oh okay. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I you can put me in any arena, any any place. Like I'm still gonna do my thing. Mm. Um, and so I said, you know, cause let's let's bounce to like another play. Like it was majority guys. So we went to this open bar. I had a drink. The girl was like, "Oh my gosh, I love your shirt." You know, because I had it said, "Women lie, men lie, but numbers don't." And then it oh. had like two band, right. It had two bands stacked together. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so. Uh, you know, one thing led to another. I'm like, you know, where are you from, Colorado? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm from Cali. What's up? And, you know, we started dancing, you know, made out. And then, like, literally before I was trying to get her number, because she kind of invited me to go, like, to her pad, like, to her place. She was like, yeah, I'm staying here in Bourbon. Um, I think, like, at the Hilton. It's down the street. Like, come through and have some drinks. And, like, my cousin wasn't being, like, a cool wingman to, like, prevent the cock block. Because I've done that with a lot of guys. I can so, see so that. Wait a minute. So, when you, so when you met this girl, you mean her cousin Her cousin was, no, your cousin was being a cock block, you saying, or her cousin was being a cock block? No, her friend was kind of being a cock block, but uh, my, my cousin wasn't the best wingman to kind of screen that situation. Ooh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What I so, mean by screening that, there's times to where, okay, you know their friend is not attractive. The friend uh, is a little, a little jealous. Team, you're trying, getting, you're you're getting attention, right? Yeah. You're getting attention, and I think it's more because she is an overweight white girl, the friend. So oh. she's, used to, she's used to brothers coming to her like she's honey. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem that I hate when brothers kind of sell themselves. Well, not kind of, but they actually do sell themselves extremely short. What is up with black men always chasing after big women and saying that they're thick? And the thing is, we get a bad stigma of us men who actually are attracted to the opposite. You know, we get like, oh, well, I'm black, so I'm supposed to like these overweight, 230 pound, you know, heavyweight, super, like looking like uh, what's it with Yokozuna and shit or some big motherfucker. You know what I mean? This shit don't right. make no sense, bro. I call them well chasers. Oh and god. So... <laughs> well chase. You know what I'm saying? Like you got Wells Fargo and Chase Bank. You can put well chase. You get it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I got you. But uh, yeah, that that is a that is a huge problem, and a lot of it is because here's the thing: a lot of guys will go into a situation, and they'll go to a bar or a club, and they'll talk to an eight, probably dance with a seven, maybe make out with a five, and then at the end of the night, they're leaving with a negative two. Yeah, and so. As a black man, you gotta have standards. Like you don't right. want to be with unattractive fat women, and right. so because of men like them, which I shame them heavily, I gotta fight these fat women off. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but you know what's so funny though? I mean, a lot of people would would say this that, well, if we, you know, go into a program of us choosing the type of women based on their looks, um it will somehow be flipped around and say, well, you guys 
are only going for looks and you guys are not going for how the woman treats you. So in a situation like that, you say to yourself, well, um, that's kind of funny because most of you women normally go for what men look like versus for how they treat you. But then they try to flip the script around and say, well, you shouldn't go for a woman based on what she looked like. You should go for a woman based on how she treats you. But OK, well, you shouldn't go for a man based on what he looks like. You should go for a man based on what he has to offer. Well, not now. Nah, nah, let me scratch that off on what his potential could be or should be. You know what I'm saying? That's what they, that's what they should be looking for. But uh, we got to keep it real. OK, because I'm going to show you a picture, man, like. Honestly, it's in, in, in particularly black women. We're talking about black women right now. We got to be real, okay? I've met women like this all the time, and I've talked to them, and they don't even look at me twice, bro. Not even twice. They don't even want to look my way. But that's okay, though. That's okay, because later on, I kind of see exactly what these women are all about. Now, obviously, I'm physically attracted to her. I, fi I find her very physically attractive. But even though she's got a lot of, um, you know body parts you know plastered on her <laughs> but mm -hmm. for the most part mm -hmm. she's got a glass of chardonnay in her glass you know what i'm saying yeah. so you gotta tell right now just based on the picture and possibly where she might be um she just looks like the type of female that will go for the men who are not even really necessarily flashing money but actually writing checks you know right. like i don't know it's just these type of women right like like for instance I'll tell you this. I would approach a woman oh, I, like this. Have you dated? Oh, go ahead. No, me. I'll approach a woman like this, right? And I'll right. talk. And depending if she saw me or not, let's just say that we met like uh, on some circumstances that um, we haven't seen each other, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we met like some sort of like on, a, on the internet or a chat room or something. We haven't seen each other. The first thing I'm going to get from her is, how tall are you? What do you look like? Now, and then on top of it, what do you do for a living? So I got three things, three things that I have to accomplish. And then once I kind of get past the, okay, let's just say, all right, she's a black woman. I know exactly what she wants to hear. Let's just be real. If you ain't six feet or taller, she ain't trying to talk to you. Uh, yes and no. Like for for example, I got a I got a homie that he's not six feet. Like I'm six four. Um, so a lot of guys will try to make this. Just, oh, you oh, do, girls, you, you got you got an advantage, buddy. So right, everyone <laughs> says that. I'm people, like, I'm a short guy, man. I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a shrimp. You you like the the goddamn lobster and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, these <laughs> women are feeling them type of dudes. Like we just gotta keep it real. They love tall ass but, dudes. But my my yeah, homie, is really good, black he, woman, bro, that shit is hard as fuck. Like, oh, you're short. A chick would be four <laughs> foot three, five foot two, and the first thing she says is, "I'm short." Right. I so, I, I I still think it's a subliminal shit test, and what I mean by that is. How are you going to react to that negative comment? And based on your response, that's going to lead to whether she's going to continue to talk to you or not for the whole rest of the night. I tell guys, literally, you have about one to two minutes mm. when you first interact with the girl to proceed forward, whether you're going to knock it down that night or you're just going to get the number or it's. One drink, you're out. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you something. Do you think that it's easier to meet women in person than it is online? Say for Hell, yes. I think yes. so, too. <laughs> I think yes. so, too. It's a whole lot easier big, in person than it is in online, bro. Big, big facts. For one, you got to understand a lot of women... They go on these dating apps just to boost their confidence. So the DMs are just flooded with beta males. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Oh, I will take you here. So <laughs> you you can't 
separate yourself from the crowd when you're there in person it's it's a totally different situation i mean there's so many advantages that you have meeting her in person so Uh you know a lot of guys unfortunately a lot of guys they just don't have social skills they don't know how to interact with women they don't know how to read the body language Uh they don't know okay there are certain clubs you do go. There are certain clubs you don't go. There are certain times of the year where it's your advantage to, you know, meet girls that are just out to party. Like, you got to know those factors, but they just, they they don't have that. A lot of them are losers, unfortunately. They, they personal. Oh, my bad. I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I tell men, put yourself in a winning situation. And that can mean a, ver- a variable of things and putting yourself in a winning situation. <laughs> we got a, we, hey, we got a lot of these out here, man, on the internet, man. Of course. Got a lot of these on the internet. You know what type of approach I like doing, man? And let, let me say something, man. I don't, I'm not a relationship guru. I never tell people I'm a relationship guru and shit. I just basically just say this, man. Listen, this is how I naturally just flow with women. Um, I would like to say things that most men are not doing and saying, right? I just, I just want to like say something that's like out of this galaxy. Like for mm-hmm. instance, the reason why I say Alex out of this galaxy, for instance, right? I'll take online. For instance, if I read a woman's profile, let's just be real. Most dudes is mm-hmm. liking up the pitches. And it's a whole bunch. Oh, girl, you look so good. Oh, you bad. Oh, you sexy as fuck. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? But they're not actually reading what the woman is saying on her posts. Right. So a lot of these men are having failures and success with these women because they're doing the same thing that every guy's doing. Like repeatedly, like you saying the same shit like the next guy did, man. Like obviously mm-hmm. she's not gonna answer to you because the shit is boring. Like you sound like this dude, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. they, they they saying like the obvious, man. So like, oh my god, this bitch is bad. But listen, man, they'll say the obvious to a chick like this. Oh, you so sexy. Oh, you look so good. Oh, right. you so bad. And they be hitting the DMs and shit. It's like, come on, man. It's one or two out of the things that you're going to get from this woman, right? For the most part, if you act like this. Number one is she's going to try to sell you something. (laughs) Or number two, she just ain't going to reply. This is how it is. But I find it very comical. Like a lot of women, a lot of men would be flooding down these messages with these females. And they don't even read their profiles. I said, dude, the easiest way to get a woman to respond to you is ask her a question about herself. Most women like to take us on interviews, right? When we go on dates. Of course. So we get the size up and down, you know, based on what do you do for a living? What type of job? You know, I hate the, I hate when they ask me, what do you do for a living? Like, of it, course. Just, it just crawled <laughs> into my back. I'm like, shit, if I get the answer to, if I don't get the answer to this question, I'm out, bro. That's it. The whole night is just going to go like, oh, uh, yeah. We're- I'm, I flip burgers at Burger King. <laughs> oh, no, bro. Hold on. So let me pause you there. I actually, I do that. I actually say that to really? test them. Yeah. I tell women, look, you know, I'm a manager at Jack in the Box. Okay. I got four baby mamas. I ain't balling. All right. I'm only out here because it's my birthday, damn it. But I got you on them cheeseburgers and, and fries. Yo, but you know what? <laughs> and so they laugh at that shit. They literally laugh at that. Bro, you make and- her laugh her ass off because she's gonna she's gonna love you even more. And that's like reverse psychology. Right. I always do that. And so and even in situations where I'm actually I know what's gonna happen, but I don't I go indirectly. So like for example, if I went to Hollywood or whatever, my boys leave. And it's like, okay, well, I'm chilling with y'all tonight. Like, y'all better not rape me or rob me, okay? Like, I'm not playing that. Yeah. And I'm leaving with, like, two two chicks, three chicks. And they're like, oh, you know, like, oh, my gosh. Like, we're not going to do that to you. Like, what do you think we are? I'm just like, hey, you know, you never know. You know, it's 2019 <laughs> now. I'm 2020. Yeah, 
Are these are these girls snow bunnies? Mainly Latinas. Oh, um, okay. Right. Yeah. You know, California, man. We we got a tons, a lot of Latinas. Yo, out I heard here. they be swerving around the place out there, bro. Yeah, they're yeah. they're they're everywhere. They're yeah. everywhere. So, but I mean, I have my fair share of snow bunnies, no doubt. You know, in, or- in Orange County, San Diego. I mean, they're out there. Like, they, they, they be looking like they be looking like this and shit. Would it be going to clubs? She she's more. She looks more your your uh, Middle Eastern. So, nah, like, she's, you know, she's Latin, bro. Yeah, she like Armenians. To me, she got that Armenian look. But we got a lot of Armenians in, in Cali too. So it's uh, w- whatever you like. It's 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 your flavor. But again, I tell guys yeah. a lot. A lot goes into it when you're trying to pick up, you know, directly face to face. Listen, I'm I just gonna keep it. Oh, go ahead, go mm-hmm. ahead, man. I'll let you finish. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, so it, a lot of it does have to do with confidence, appearance, um, and kind of your crew, like what guys you're hanging out with as well. Um. Yeah, to a certain degree, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep it one hundred. I'm gonna keep it real with mm-hmm. you. I have a friend who looks like this, and the first thing I said to her, man, like I had to talk with her, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, I want to make a pass at her, or whatever, because number one is I told her straight. She's like, "Yo, you came at me so real, you so funny and cute, but I, I like you. You know what I'm saying? Like you mad cool." And I said, "Yeah, I think you cool too." She told me all that shit. Yo, I, I felt good, but I said this to <laughs> I said this to her straight up. I said, "Listen." I'm going to tell you some reasons why I would not date you rather than I would date you because I know a lot of niggas that be hitting you up will tell you the reasons why they want you, okay? I'm going to tell you the reason why I don't want you. And this shocked the fuck out of her, bro. She was just like, what? Really? I'm that type of a person? I said, listen, this is what I get from you on some real shit. You are too thirsty for niggas who got their pockets long. That is a turn off for me. No, no, no. I don't want a woman that's about that because... You know, you seem like a type of chick that I would probably play around with on some real shit. And if I mm-hmm. had to pump up some cash, I probably would. But that's about it. But I wouldn't date your ass. I wouldn't be with you. And she said, you really feel that way about me? Really? And she started looking at me kind of weird. I said, yeah, because, you know, I mean, you're just not my type. Right. And so, that blew, blew her mind. Right. So from so, that perspective, she like she grew to like me more. Which was kind of fucking weird because it's like she would tell me all about her guy problems, but at the same time, she always wanted to be around me. She wanted to come to my house. She wanted to chill. And I'm like, yo, I'm not like, yo, I got a life. Yo, <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, so let me let me ask you this. So yeah. what what ended up happening? Like, did you end up smashing or friend zone? What was nah, the result? I didn't smash because she's a super hoe. Well, that's, that's, what super just, holes, yeah. that, that's what super holes are for. But anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, nah, she does a super duper hole, bro. I can't. Oh, <laughs> so to be honest, like, girls like her, um, quarantine, feel, quarantine for four nah, days and then come out, <laughs> right? Well, I mean, they're not difficult to smash, but however, I always tell the guy, look, it's all about time and place with, with girls like that. So if you were in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or anywhere, okay, and you see her, you know women like her, they like high status dudes. So right. you're not and you exactly, have- and that's why I don't fit the qualification. I told her straight up, I said, listen, I am not qualified for the job because I don't have the proper degrees for this position. <laughs> she said, What? What are you talking about? I said, listen, right. I listen, your ass is like a Ferrari. I want to stay to my Honda Civic. I'm good. <laughs> I don't want wow. to be. So See. I was just I was fucking with her, bro. Cause she knows I joke right. around. And she's like, right. I don't know. It's something about you. I said, what? There's something about you. I don't know if you're being serious or you're being, are you just fucking with my head? You're just fucking with me. And then she started getting emotional and shit. You're just fucking mm-hmm. with me. You know, mm-hmm. good looking. So, in that point of the relationship, and we were cool with each other, everything that I said to this girl from here on out was valuable. Like, because mm-hmm. she, like, her perspective of what I think of her is what would make her feel more secure about herself. Because I was like the number one guy, like that dude, like, you know. I fucks with him type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? 
And there's been times where she kind of came at me on some sideways shit, like, oh, um, we should have a baby. But I don't want to be with you, but I'll have your baby though. I'm like, what? She she honestly said that. She honestly said that, bro. Mm-hmm. She said, I'll have your baby, but I wouldn't want to be with you. Right. So basically, in my opinion, that's kind of being viewed as that beta utility guy. Mm-hmm. So meaning that she was still she'll give it up to Pookie, Ray Ray, Tyrone, and Thuggo. Right. But you you know, being a, a intelligent, decent black man, you're you have that value of being a utility, right? And so that's why she made that comment, like I'll have your baby, but not be with you. But I won't be with you. And from that mm-hmm. point on, I kind of, I didn't feel nothing, but I just felt like not feel nothing, but I just kind of scratched my head, like what, what, mm-hmm. like what the <laughs> fuck? Like I was just like, nah, nah, I'm good. <laughs> right. That just completely turned me off, bro. And then mm-hmm. when I started to see these behaviors and these patterns keep going on and on, and I know what type of girl she is, bro. She looks like one of them type of chicks. So that's what would you expect from most women? Not saying most women who look like her, but most women who kind of present themselves mm-hmm. in a high lifestyle. I mean, she goes for men who have money, obviously. You know, I'm pretty sure she got her boobs and her ass done. She's told me stories, everything about her, bro. Like. You know, she used to fuck guys for money and shit after clubs. And sometimes she would just get money without even having to do anything. She told me the most whore stories. And I'm just like, damn, right. women actually talk like this with each other? Yes. This, this yes. shit is crazy, boy. Crazy. So, again, when you run into women like that, every man has an opportunity. You know, it's just, it's on you and the way you pursue her. Uh, um, and you have to display that because, again, you know, one man's uh, well, basically, <laughs> one man's one man's treasure is the next man's trash. And uh, so, if if she knows that, okay, you know, I mean, if you know that, hey, she's been ran through, whatever, whatever, whatever. Again, that that night, you guys go out. After you, you you get her number, you chopped it up, anything can happen. Like you always gotta be prepared for the situation. But don't automatically put yourself in that friend zone saying, I would date, this is the type of girl that I'm looking like. I tell guys, like, let it flow. Let yeah. it don't cut yourself up short. Because nah. there's been several nights where I've gotten chick's number, went out thinking nothing was gonna happen, and I'm pounding her in the parking lot, bro, in the backseat of the car. Sometimes that happens, and that happened to me before, too. <laughs> I met a girl yeah. at a nightclub, man. I don't know <laughs> what it was, man, but this chick, uh, she, let me say this. I had my my hair long at the time, right? Because I used to right. have cornrows rolls and shit, right? But mm-hmm. I, I pressed my hair. My hair was long and shit, so I was looking like a little pretty boy. This chick thought like I was like a Fabio Dominican motherfucker, right? So <laughs> this chick oh, pulled me, right? Yeah, she thought I was a straight suave type dude. Like I was straight, you know, poppy, you know, poppy suave yeah. and shit. So like yeah. in the club and shit. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm chilling, whatever. I, I hey, I played my part. Hey, I took her home. I smashed her by the con- the construction site and shit. Titties right. on out of the sunroof and shit. And I was tearing that ass up. Then guess what? I sent her home. The next day, she wanna call me and just say, Oh, I had a wonderful night last night. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, me right. too. Then another day later, I get a call from her husband. What? Yeah. Uh, Damn. I get a call from her husband. Her husband says, listen, I don't know who you are. My wife is just there on vacation. I'm like, my wife? First, I'm like, the fuck? Your wife? Like, who? who the fuck? I don't know what the fuck going on, right? He didn't even say who his name was or who the girl was or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck? My wife. You fucked my wife. I'm like, what? I'm like, man, this this got be some jokes. I hung up. Motherfucker called me back. He said, hey, listen to me. I can trace your address down and all this other shit. And he says, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Then, then he says the woman's name. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Like, okay, you her husband? Yeah. And da, 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 da. I'm like, listen, man, my bad, bro. But listen. 
I didn't even know. I didn't know she was married. I just met the girl that night. You know what I'm saying? So don't get mad at me, bro. You need to get mad at your wife. She the one that want to out there for. And that's what I said. One man's yeah. treasure is the next man's trash. Yeah. And then guess what? Yeah, it's been a while. And then guess what? Motherfucker told me straight up, like, I don't want you seeing my wife. I don't want you talking to my wife because I, I guess she's from Philly. She was on vacation, man. Let mm-hmm. me tell you, man. You never trust a girl that's going on vacation. Of with course. A bitches with them, man. I'm telling you this right now. You be surprised at the shit that they be doing. Oh, damn. Who's that? <laughs> I don't know, but her name is at Serena, baby. Right. <laughs> My Right. And so, you, so again, yeah, man. I, I've I've been in situations like that, and I tell guys like, you know, if they're going to Vegas, if they're going out of town, you know, if they're going to Cancun, they're single on that trip. And so, those you know, for guys that are single that are trying to hook up and meet attractive women, you have to be in those situations to increase your chances. Otherwise, you you can still knock women like that, but you're kind of going to need that crutch, and that crutch would be, you know, bottle service. <laughs> or I, 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 I met girls, you know, girls at the gas to station. Like, yeah, but, so most I, the girl, but I'm going to tell you what, man. You've got a good advantage, too. I'm going to tell you why you have a really good advantage, because a lot, not a lot of guys have that advantage. And the fact that you're tall, and most women love tall men. So the thing is, your dating option kind of increases a little bit more. You get what I'm saying? Versus the you, you kind of fall a little bit maybe into the five, ten percent bracket in that so so case. When it comes down to physical attraction, because one thing is for sure I know, especially with black women, they love tall men. So there's a there's a big, 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 big uh um what's it call it? Um there's a there's a big uh attraction. Well, yeah, not traction, but uh, we have to, we have to live up to those expectations, for right. the most part. Of course, whatever, always with black men. So whatever we put, whatever we put as as the media of how black men are supposed to re- represent themselves is who we have to be. Because if we don't fall into those p- categories, guess what? She's not going to find us attractive. Now, I've talked to many black women. I've asked them. I said, "Hey, you know what? You know, uh." Well, good. Find me attractive, whatever. They're like, eh, nah, you're not tall enough, and you you a shorty. Like I'll have a girl who's five feet two, right? And kid you not, and and, and I'm five feet nine, and she's calling me a shorty. Wow. Does that make any sense? I'm like, listen, listen. I'm looking down at you. I'm looking down at you. She looking like shorty. She looking at me. <laughs> shorty. Oh, you short. I'm like, what? Uh-huh. You five foot two, I'm five foot nine. What you want a tree branch and shit? Like, I know you must get a lot of really, really, really short women that go after that because they they got this thirst for tall men. And for some reason, like especially like this is what I see with a lot of the the a lot of the black men that get picked up, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, a lot of them, the lot I, I I can say this solely, right? The ones that I see nowadays with black women chasing is usually the skinny dudes. Who are tatted the fuck up? Uh-huh. That's facts. That's facts. That's what they go for now. Like I seen a lot of girls, so I was just curious about it all, right? And I asked the black woman like this, and I said, "Listen, um, the same girl I was on the phone with." I said, "Listen, uh-huh. I, I said I got a question. What is it up with black women and skinny black men with tattoos and shit? Like, like wow, like I see, I see big." Fat black women <laughs> with skinny dudes who black and yeah. tall that are skinny. I see short, square looking black women. I see all types of black women chasing that. I see all types of different races of women chasing after these type of men. I'm saying to myself, what is it? Is this a is this the trend now that's been out for like maybe the, the last year or so? Is it skinny black men who are tatted up? Is that everyone's choice? And I asked her, I was like, listen, I'm not jealous. Don't get it twisted. I'm just curious because I see a lot of black women going for those type of men. She says, right. yeah, it's because um, 
I don't know. I was like, is it like, what is it that, what's the fascination behind it? That's what I want to know. Um, it's because they got big dicks. What? <laughs> I said, wow. What? She said, yeah, they got big dicks. That's why I like them. I like them skinny, bony, because like, they got big dicks. I said, where, where did that come from? Where did that preference come from? So I had another girl tell me that shit, too. So I'm like, oh, shit. This must be true, then, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So I guess that's the reason. But then I noticed that every single year, it's like women change up their choice of attraction, of, of the type of men that they want to be with. Right. Right. And um, I've always said this to fellas, too, that no matter what type of female you got with or you're with, at the end of the day, Women always do the choice. Uh, I think when it comes to relationships, men have that advantage in marriage. But yes. when it comes to, when it comes to hooking up, um, it's yeah, women women have the choice who they let in them. You know what I mean? So uh, I would agree with you on that, but. You know, again, I always tell guys it's it's a lot of variable factors. You know, where are you always talking to women? You know, what are you trying to, to improve your status in terms of, you know, your finances, your health, um, your appearance maybe, you know, or are you going to the gym? Because you'd be surprised that a lot of these women that are looking like those models or whatever – they're really lonely yeah and they they, they <laughs> have, <laughs> a lot right, of them right. And, and and a lot of them have self-identity issues you know where they have low self-esteem because they're not getting the likes that they're getting on instagram they're not getting enough dms and so as as a man like you can you can mentally control a woman bro like you you can dominate her in that realm if you display that masculinity um, and keep that tone throughout the whole relationship for the most part. I got a question mm -hmm. too, man, because like most men fairly would say they want a woman that, you know, that's submissive. And whenever you bring up this uh, statement, uh, or this word in matter uh, to a female, and, and particularly black women, they tend to... Uh, you know, they, t they take things in a wrong way when you say, hey, we like a woman who's submissive. They automatically think like, ah, I'm not going to be your slave. Ah, I'm not going to do whatever you want. I'm like, that's not the concept of submissive. Like, you're missing the whole concept of it. Like, I don't want right. you to be my slave, but I want you to embrace your femininity and be the woman that I possibly fell in love with and I got married to. You know what I'm saying? If it get down to that mm -hmm. room. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I think right. what it is is that, you know, it seems like, you know, I don't know, maybe other races of women kind of, you know, get that when it comes down towards their race of men. But for some reason, we well, just, it's the it's the culture. Yeah. A lot of a, yeah. a lot of a lot of black women grew up without a black father in these single parent homes. So they see that their mom lashed out on men in, in a masculine, negative tone. Um, at a young age, they weren't taught to basically um, to discipline themselves to not use men and to be out there uh, promiscuous. So when she's like that at 12 and 13 years old, when she turns 22, yeah, she's not going to have that femininity at all. Mm. But again, you know, white women, Latin women, Asian women, they, they understand that, hey, you know, my purpose of being a woman is to serve the man. And they understand that my job is to be the helper of the relationship 
I'm yeah, but I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I, I get. I get what you're saying, but I don't think a lot of women like the word "serve." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it kind of the the like thing is, hold on. History. Oh, you're my slave. You're gonna do what I say. You know what I mean? So, right. in a way, it kind of sounds a little bit uh, vague. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know. But I, I get what it says. That's what it says, basically, in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? But right. And so it is. Again, what it is. It's weird, but you know. You know. We can go down the line of um, basically again. It, it's there's a lot of factors that play into it, but feminism is one of them. And when a woman ha has no respect for men and no respect for herself, then yeah, you you can't you can't expect her to value you, value you as a man and what you can do for her in her life. Because think of it like this: a rich man can change a poor woman's life in a snap of a finger. But would a rich woman do that to a poor man? And we're supposed to be equal, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you're kind of right on that. I don't see, I wouldn't really see, <laughs> unless <laughs> unless she's a Kruger, unless she's a right. Kruger and she's going after a younger guy and she's, she's kind of maintained her body pretty well, then she's going to spoil that man. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I've been waiting to find those type of women, man. I I need for me to find me like an ex, an ex wife who, who who divorced a doctor. What? Right. I've been with a couple of soldiers, so, and they're uh, cool. You know? Yeah, man. They'll take care of you, man. You young and shit, and all they want is penis. That's right. it. They, they give you straight that. to the point. Straight to the point. They buy you anything you want, and you get some ass. Come on, man. You can't ask for nothing more. Right. So. I think what black women try to do is they try to help hold the standard really, really high and they don't understand their role as a woman. And so oh, unfortunately, when they, that's a strong statement though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say all of them though. I, I, I mean, just based on my observation, my opinion, I well, look at, look how many black women are married. Look at the single black baby mom ring. Okay. Okay. It's extremely yeah. high. It's like 70% of black mothers are single mothers. But you and know, they want to blame, blame you. They want to blame you and I. You're pumping and dumping us. But, no, uh, we're not. I have no kids. But also, you also got to you also got to take into account too. Like um cuz I know personally of of hand. I know some girls who are black women who are very smart, right? And Mm -hmm. They devoted most of their time into their careers, but they forgot to devote their time into socializing. And it's good to be a boss. You know what I mean? Because I get this all the time from black women when they got their degrees and shit. I'm a boss bitch and nobody could tell me what to do or like, you know what I'm saying? And they got these nice jobs and, you know, don't get me wrong. Some of them are very fit. They take care of themselves and everything. But it's just the one thing they just can't seem to capitalize is a relationship. And it's sad to say, but I see a lot. And I'm just like, well, you know, I see some women who are very highly successful who are black women. And I've seen some that will won't lower their standards down for necessarily a brother. You know what I mean? Once they get into that high status, it's it's more like they're dating uh -huh. in a different a different class so, B, you know right there's a lot of women like that um and i go back and, and say that those women are suffering because in their 20s and probably younger 30s when they were at their prime they were too busy running the cock carousel and so they didn't understand that look during these prime years this is when i need to settle down and find a husband and take a man serious because when I get 35 and older, those high successful men, they're either married or they don't want to be married. That's it. So you you are, yeah, you can claim you're the boss bitch and you got all this money, but I don't want you because look how your attitude is from the beginning. Well, do you think that now that, mm -hmm. you know, we're in a situation right now and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, obviously the coronavirus and everything. Right. There's a lot of women working at home and there's some that are not working at all and they're at home. So it, it kind of it kind of leads us into kind of like a, a survival mode because it, it, it feels like half 
and even some men too, men like myself well, or contractors were cut off of our our uh, our funds. But I mean, I've noticed this with. Uh, do you think with those set of women now that they're being quarantined? Do you think they're going to lower their options or they're going to stick to their guns? Me personally, I think they're going to stick to their guns. They're, they're, going, to miss, they're going to miss men. They're going to miss the attention. But once this is all settled and done, they're going to go back to, you know, being out, being promiscuous. They're going to go back to using men. This is... I just want attention. I want you to text me. I want you to say that you miss me type of quarantine period. Their mm -hmm. behavior is mm -hmm. not going to change. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play this clip by Joe Buttons, man. And I want to get okay. your, I want to get your opinions on this, man. Cause uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's quite interesting. Y'all yeah. will just give a nigga some raw, raw sex. Sometimes y'all will invite yourselves over five times a week. Sometimes y'all will want to call every day and talk. Bam, I'm not a dickhead. I'm going to answer the phone and talk. Let's talk. But no, I have not said I wanted to be a, wanted to be your boyfriend. I have not said I'm looking for a relationship. I have not said that I view you in that light. I am just enjoying what's happening. And because you are trying to sell yourself as the greatest girlfriend in the world, you wonder why that's not reciprocal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, what do you get just from watching that from Joe Budden's statement? I, I fell him. You know, it's basically the girls are coming to him for attention, validation, and he knows that, hey, these women are basically women that are hoes and they've been ran through. Mm. I don't have... I don't have time for that. I mean, I'll entertain you because, hey, I'm in quarantine as well. We can still kick it, you know, whatever. But I don't want a serious relationship with you or try to make you wifey. That's my thoughts. Huh. Wow. Well, I mean, my opinion is what I get from it. I'm going to, you know, kind of talk on both sides because I was listening to the video and I was watching both people's body language, too, and I was even watching her just to see if she would say something. But uh, what I get from it, um, it seems like Joe Buttons is tired of the bullshit. Of course. Uh, from women. And I guess it's like a, a back and forth thing when it comes down to women. I, I make it to, to where you kind of pick up the signs and you just get disgusted by it because it's like, oh, God, what the fuck? Like, oh, you know, I'm single and I'm doing my shit on a regular but it's like y'all wouldn't want to hit me up until I got somebody. That's kind of like Joe's situation. But then it's mm -hmm. like when I don't got nobody, y'all either not trying to hear what I got to say because maybe my pockets ain't right. But then when my pockets is right and I don't got nobody, maybe in that certain certain type of sequence, he's like, well, y'all say y'all want to chill and you don't want to chill. Y'all say you want to do this and you don't want to do that. It's like a repeated thing over and over again, and he feels like he has to keep chasing these women, but he doesn't do that. Why should he do that? Right. Hey, boy, you I, mean, also I, don't guy, I don't see a guy like him. I'm sorry because you were about. I don't see a guy like him being chased by anybody because he kind of falls. I, I, I mean, I would presume he falls more in that, what, 5 10% bracket, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would, but, you know, Joe Button doesn't have that rapper status like he did in the late uh, 90s, you know, early 2000s. Yeah. Um, however, you know, he, he his, his message is pretty much clear. Like you mentioned that he's in a relationship, like you guys want to hit me up, whatever, whatever. But you got to also understand that women are jealous creatures. When they see you with something, okay, it, it's just like you going to the mall with the fine <laughs> chick and she's on your arm mm -hmm. women are going to want to look and low-key trying to holler you know flip their hair show their ass right in front of your chick just to get her jealous and i noticed you know? that too i've noticed that heavy and i can feel what joe bunnings is coming from because mm -hmm. it's like when he was single and he was just like you know 
doing his craft and his work, he didn't really have too many women around him because most, let's just be real, man. Most of the chicks that was hollering at him was like when he was kind of like in his prime, like when he was like really on the rap scene, rap scene, you know, and he had money going on. It's just like with today's rappers. But now it's like those girls kind of fall back, but he's still kind of getting them here and there. You know what I mean? But he kind of knows. Yeah, he kind of knows. He, he, he's about. single now, right? Didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he was supposed to get married. He, he, he got engaged twice. But mm -hmm. it's just um, I can see why he's had failed relationships, man. And people are, you know, a lot of people are going to point the fingers and say, well, Joe's just unstable and he just he just be looking at other girls. And all. like pe women don't really understand, man, that mm -hmm. a lot of y'all are very extremely difficult to deal with in relationships. Very. Y'all don't really understand. It has nothing to do with the woman's looks or whatever. And sometimes to me, at least that's what it seems to me, the, the more bad she is or the more fine she looks is the more problems you gotta deal with mm -hmm. and i think i've seen this chaos i've seen this repeated nature too with joe buttons and he tends to go for like the type of chicks he usually go for like the the thick latinas or you know say a little curvy mixed chicks you know what i'm saying which ain't nothing wrong with that everybody's got their preference you know but i mean just from that you know, just from that kind of frame, you could kind of tell, like, uh, well, right. you know, that type of that's the type of women. But at the same time, you could also tell, like, man, these girls ain't built to be wise, man. <laughs> uh, of course, and a lot of those hip hop video girls, and uh, probably a lot of women that Joe Button um, has been with, you know, from the yeah. clubs and stuff like that, are want to be high maintenance women. They're high maintenance, and what are they doing to actually better your life? You got to spend money to go to the Cheesecake Factory. You got to go to Red Lobster. You got to take her shopping. You got to do all these things. Yeah. And you get you to a point where that Chanel bag, that Gucci bag, <laughs> that Prada, because she looked like the type of chick that likes to get Chanel. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he, he, they, these are the type of girls Joe Buttons be, be getting. Like he be pulling these type of hoes, man. And you already know you gonna get her hair done. You gonna take her to get her boobs done, all that other shit. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. But also, I want to add real real quick too. Like, mm -hmm. just watching the clips in the video, I'm gonna talk about the female now. And she wasn't saying nothing. She was listening, right? Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough, because he's talking. But if you look at her you could tell that she's old you know what i'm saying like she looked like she already mm -hmm. had like three four kids and shit <laughs> but it's just looking at this chick she looks like a puppy like a like a little puppy that's just happy to be here take me home you know what i mean mm -hmm. look the star struck starstruck look and it's like to me at least it's what i see if it was a regular brother preaching the same type of shit, let's just be real. Like Joe Bunnins was talking. We will get lashed at a lot because there's a lot of people who don't like Red Pillars. There's a lot of people who don't like MGTOW and all those other, other groups, whatever. I, I have no idea this one guy, but, you know, I get the same type of message. So I, I hear where they're coming from. But at the same time, I mean, just hearing Joe Buttons, right? Do you think that you're right over there? Yeah, yeah, oh. I'm fine. I'm just okay. moving something. Oh, okay. okay. Go ahead. So, oh. Sorry for the loudness. You there? Drew. The internet's holding you back. You paused on me, homie. Yo yo connection there. Hey, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. That's your man. I, I had a had a crazy disconnection there. That's weird. Um <clears throat> would you honestly think, right, that Joe Buttons probably has become uh a little bit more aware or have that awareness now? Oh yes, absolutely. Down. If you look at his past 
relationships mm-hmm. have all been failures, bro, and it's all been some bullshit, right? Right. And it's like he keeps dating the same patterns of women. And I do you think that he's probably gotten it now? Like, yo, the fuck am I doing? Like, like, do you think he's he's gotten it now? Like the type of women he should be with? Yes. Um, for him, he's been through the baby mama drama. He's been through all the thotties. He's been through all the groupies. And it's all the common denominator, as we kind of mentioned, you know, them being high maintenance, what you can do for them. And I think at a certain age, as you mature as a man, you value other things in life, such as just simple peace, Mm. you know, and freedom. And now he's understanding that these women are only just good pretty much for one thing. And so... I enjoy basically not dealing with these type of women because in the past it has ruined me as a man. So I think Joe Budden is at that stage now where he has zero tolerance and he doesn't care about trying to attract these women for any type of long-term basis. And you know what? It's got me thinking, too, a lot on a lot of things, too, is that I started to, like, look at and absorb, absorb, like, like analyze a lot of females and see exactly how they maneuver, how they act, and how they, you know, just, just how they move on certain things. And I said to myself, I said, listen, man, like, I think I might be doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I wasn't spotting out what it is like the pattern. And I started to see the pattern, the type of women I'm going after. I'm like, Oh shit. I see. Uh I gotta, I gotta get out of that zone. I gotta get out of that. See a person like Joe buttons, right? All right. With his success and everything, he should have been with a woman who's like an executive and some sort of, uh, music industry somewhere in the music where she has some sort of value because if you look at it most of these chicks he made them famous Mm -hmm. these weren't women that were famous to begin with why i see why a lot of dudes end up marrying famous women if they're famous because if you look at it joe buttons and all these girls like tahiri and shit like what the fuck is what the fuck does she do Like what the fuck? What the yeah. fuck did she do? But she got a big ass, and she takes a bunch of pictures, so she became a model. So that's that's mm-hmm. that's, that's the whole thing now. So that's why, why you think you got so many girls on old on on IG taking booty shot pictures and shit because they trying to be the next Joe Budden's t- Tahiri and shit. Right, but the thirst is real. You have a lot of men that will pay for those premium Snapchats. Um, uh, again, what, again. What, what, yeah, I talked about mm-hmm. this the other day. It's called uh, uh, OnlyFans or some shit. Fans com. only, right. Yeah, some shit like that. So yeah. men are craving that validation. Like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And <laughs> just to get the attention, <laughs> just just to get a text message back from an attractive woman on, a, on an app craves their validation. You know, basically feeds their 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 craving for validation, and so you have women that saying, "Okay, if I can get this guy, then I can get a Joe Budden type of dude." Mm-hmm. So Joe Budden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you Joe got Budden, the, you got these type of chicks that be saying that shit. Nah, I, these are his type of chicks. He's the type right. of chick who wants to be smashed, and I know his type. Right, <laughs> right. But you you have lames that will send her money for her showing her ass or titties. And those are obviously guys that she don't want to date because, you know, I'm just going to use, use them for his money, but you're feeding into her ego that, okay, if I can get him, then I can get a guy like Joe button and tie him down. But these women, they come with, with hella baggage and hella problems and it's not worth your time and it's not worth your sanity. So 
these guys that have been through these women now value their time and they value their sanity and yeah. they want no no part of them. And I think at one time Joe Buttons was was doing what every young man was doing. He was smashing hoes. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You get on the rap scene, man, and you get in chicks that you've never even bat smashed before. And then now you're smashing all these bad looking bitches, right? And it's like because you you the man now, you up top there, right? But then you realize that you sh- you should have used your success to your advantage to get the better looking women, the women that have like that are executive movie project projectors or somebody who's up there. You know what I'm saying? Like he should have got like, honestly, Joe Budden should have got with somebody in the industry because one thing I can understand is this, right? Is that people in the music industry like to network. They love Mm -hmm. to network. You got to network. So if you're networking, that's why. In music, it doesn't cost it like like no no I should say it costs you to beef and have issues with another artist because number one is it costs certain fans to not support you. Number two, you gotta you gotta beef up on security because of his camp, and it it, it just becomes like a cluster fluck. You know what I mean? So but, you gotta be my smart. My, my, my thing is I I hear you on. You know, a woman that's an executive and has stuff going for her. Yeah. But no, I mean, like in the, in the, but I mean, like in the music industry, because Joe Buttons was okay. part of the music industry. So right. even, he could have got with himself with like a, a person that was like a singer, a famous singer who already got that bag. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you've got somebody who got that bag already, you know that it's not for the money for the most part. Right. Right. But, but here's the thing. A lot of women that are in that industry, and women, period, they never settle for men that's lower than them financially. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> so, a, a nigga who got two million dollars is on the C list to them. They look don't... at Tom. Look at Tom Brady's wife. Okay, like I don't know if you've been reading the news lately, but nah, I, don't really, the... I don't really pay too much attention to mainstream media, man. I just uh... okay. But go ahead. Well, anyways, go. she makes a lot more than him. Like she's like four hundred million, and he's like sixty million. Okay, but he's Mister America. You know, tall white guy, won six Super Bowls. Wow. But right, you know, again, she she basically settled for a dude like him, and he's like the one percent rule because he has hella status being one of the best football quarterbacks that ever played the game. Of course. So, she so, bagged herself a big-ass fish. Right. And so, but the thing is, she has the money. She has way more money than him. So, Ooh. That, right. But well, you got to understand it. You got to understand it doesn't matter. He's got fame, though, because he's connected to yeah. other people that could be connected to people that she's not connected to. Well, that's, way, said, that's, that's why money, I said money this. Flowing, bro. The money keeps flowing between them two. So they make an right, endorsement. Right. Her fans become his fans. His fans become, you know what I'm saying? And she he crazy. won her strictly off the of status. Now we know in the rap game that you only get you're likely to get five years of fame, ten if that. Okay, Yo, that. After that, that's it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a singer in your prime, you're not gonna want to. You paused again, but you're not gonna want to settle down with a guy like Joe Budden. That's no longer mainstream. Andrew, come back. <laughs> we got to fix that internet, bro. The white man's holding your internet back. O'Shea. Yo. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I was I was, I was, was in and out, man. I'm, I'm by the airport. I don't know what the hell is going on. This goddamn piece of shit. It's supposed to be 5G, no. man. Goddamn. Oh, <laughs> The white man's holding back your internet, bro. It's all good. But I'll just <laughs> recap. I'll just recap what I said. Basically, a lot of women that have that high status, and what I mean financially, they'll settle with the guy that's lower value if if he has more status than her. So, in a situation like Joe Budden, you're lucky to be in the rap game for five to ten years with that mainstream media. After that, you know, the new generation, they don't really know Joe Bud. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you know, yeah, and you know what? Mm-hmm. He started he started to uh what got 
Joe Budden's back into the mix is I think he did an excellent job on Complex, man, because we needed like an like a old like an old school guy on the show, but right. also has like different point of views mixed with the new school. That five G, bro. You need a you need to upgrade that internet. Real talks, big facts. True. Yo. Holler if you can hear me. Okay, I think you're making a comeback. Drew. Yo, Holler. Where you at, Drew? Well, waiting for him to check back in. Drew. Yo. Yeah, man. Yo, that was, that was crazy, man. My bad, bro. Like, my, my connection was acting funky. I don't know what the hell's going on, man. Alien, aliens is taking over the 5G, man. They, they fucking up the networks right now. My mm -hmm. bad. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So, um... Yeah, I mean, where did we left off at, man? My bad. We had a bad interruption. Right. We were talking about Joe Button and basically him settling our... It's hard for men to get those high status women um, that are in their prime. It's hard. It's hard to wipe those type of women out. I think it's even hard to get them outside of their prime too, because some of them outside of their prime still got that. You know, instead of one of a millionaire, they'll probably go for like a thousandaire. You know, what I'm saying the ones that kind of fell off and <laughs> go for right. like, like, for example, I, little, little Kim. She she fell off a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you know the ones that fall off a lot? Have you noticed that they end up settling with doctors or some shit like that? Like the doctors will get the leftover reject chicks that been with celebrities and shit. Yeah, I married me a doctor. I'm like, yeah, he's like, what? Maybe about close to half a million, about, you know, a million or so. So she's like, all right, well, I can live comfortable. So I'm just going to settle. Like these girls went from rappers to going down to doctors and saying, hey, I, and lawyers, I'll just settle. Of course. Um, it's crazy. But again, a, a lot of those men are basically your typical beta men, and they're not really attracted to those men because they lack that alpha, that alpha mindset. And so they just mm. see those men as a as a utility. So they mm. still want that masculine alpha dude. Um, and unfortunately, those guys get really the leftovers, bro. And those are the women you don't want. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, man. Like, and you can't really sell yourself short as men, too, man. You just gotta work on yourself. Like, so listen, man, I gotta work on myself, too. I'm just waiting after this quarantine shit. I want to hit the gym and get back into shape, man. Because I I hate this ish. <laughs> I hate right. it. Because you know, cool. they want people to be like fat couch potatoes and shit <laughs> coming out of quarantine. Oh, right. man. Yeah, you still got to do some exercises. Like, I'm doing sprints at the park, doing push-ups, and it's just like, too. like, I just miss yeah, actually lifting weights and running on the treadmill, and I miss going, I like, and just the jacuzzi and stuff like that. Yeah, I miss having a life period, man. It was just like, damn, before March 26, it was like, damn, everything was so normal, and it's like, it's just crazy. It just, it just feels like... It's just weird. I just feel like I'm just off from work and I'm just waiting to get called back to go in. But it's like shit. It's it's mm -hmm. getting kind of crazy now, man. But um I want to show this video before before we let you go. I'm gonna show you this video okay. uh of this. Um I guess she's a she's an activist. Um mm -hmm. I don't know too much about her, but it's just one of those video clips that I just found and I, I found it quite interesting in what she was talking about in her book. But it, it, it's it's an old clip, I would say, from like 19, maybe 96, 97, I should say. But anyway, okay. yeah. All right, man. I'm just going to go ahead and play this. Yeah. 
our side chat about the book well, I'm glad without you're here. all the fireworks and everything. Um, you say black women, and I quote you as saying, nag, nag, yes. nag. And we, that we, we are do. essentially responsible for pushing our men away by doing uh, a so. A lot of times, uh, we, we take a position because of our own emo emotional mechanisms. Uh, we harass our men too much. We nag our men too much, and we keep his mind and his head so bundled up and bogged down with all of our personal idiosyncrasies about our day-to-day -day personal relationship with him that a lot of times we don't free his mind up to go out and to plan sanely for our future and for the future of our children. Uh, many of them come to us every day and they almost have to do a wind test. They don't know what's going on. They don't know who they're going to meet because we have a lot of uh, reactions. Uh, we tend to think as black women that a successful relationship and one where we're happy is one where everything goes our way. And the first time it goes another kind of a way, then we go into hell, turmoil in our brain, and we start deciding, oh, I've got... So, if things don't go their way, and pretty much they kind of flee the coop, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My relationships in the past kind of felt that way when I used to date women, and it's like, I felt like every little thing I did was a fuck up to her, bro. And I just said to myself, well, damn, what am I doing? And then she'll let me go. Oh, it's not you. It's me. Want to feed me that bullshit? I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. And then I don't get emotional to where I'm like, hey, hey, hey. some of these dudes crying on, on. Come on, man. I used to hate that shit. They're like, listen, if you're going to cry, at least like cry in a car. I'm crying in a corner. Right. <laughs> what you got? Yeah. Social media so everybody can see your face, man. He's grown ass man. Grown right. ass man crying and shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. We can't be doing that. And it's mm -hmm. like, ever since these dudes started crying, I'm like, are they crying for validation or are they crying because they need help? I would say both. Um, but to respond to your clip, I think every black woman needs to hear her message. I, I, I approve of it. Uh -huh. uh, you know, she is a hundred percent right that if it doesn't go their way, they get mad and upset and you have to give a man peace. You have to let him think individually and independently that's very important because again mm. as a man if you're always taking the lead of your woman pretty much that's going to be a hell type of relationship for the most part and you know i tell guys that hey you got to set the tone you're the leader you're running the show you're the prize at the end of the day you are the prize but unfortunately, with a lot of black women, they believe they're the prize and they believe that they can do no wrong and that you need to kiss their ass. You need to do everything that they want you to well, do. I mean, Otherwise, but I mean, that's, she ain't giving that's up the draws. Yeah, but that's what every woman in the world. I, I mean, that's yeah, what, but, but, okay, it's not, it's for example. Like there are a lot of women. I think every woman in, in this country tend to be that way, bro. <laughs> Right. That, that is facts. Uh, I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not gonna deny that. I mean that that is facts. See, here's the thing where a lot of black men get it, shoot themselves in the foot. They'll complain about black women problems to the white girl, Latina, and Asian girl. And Ooh. they'll basically right. They'll basically, oh, she doesn't she doesn't give you blowjobs like that. Oh, okay. So they'll do the things that the black girl doesn't do. And you're just like, oh my gosh, yes. And then the minute they get pissed. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the, the minute they get oh, pissed no, at baby, you, please. They'll, they'll, they'll take that treatment away from you and a heartbeat. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll take that treatment away from you in a heartbeat. And then you're sitting and saying to yourself, like, what the fuck happened? Like, you know, she used to blow me and make pancakes in the morning. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> oh, shit. So that shit changes. Damn. Right. And so that's where I say, hey, you know, you need to understand female nature. And it's not because of race. It's all women, bro. It's yeah. all women. So when they see some type of value in you, okay, 
and you and you complain about well this woman doesn't do this uh, they're gonna they're gonna do the things that she didn't do just to get you you know whether if it's to commit or just when you over or, or what they would do is they'll do the same things that you disapprove of that girl and do to you if they're pissed off at you <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You know that for sure, man. Like, you ever been with a chick and it's like, yo, she like she would either ask you, What pisses you off? I hate that shit. And I've always wondered, like, why the hell you want to know what pisses me off? But then I found out that she wanted to collect this information to what pisses you off to hold that as ammunition. So that way. Mm-hmm. When she gets pissed off at you, guess what? She's got something to argue with. Then she starts being like your ex. And you're like, what right. the fuck? What just happened? See, I fell victim to that when I was younger. Because mm-hmm. I always was, like, I felt like I shouldn't tell a bitch what the fuck I was doing with other females. Like, I always felt that way, but I was also <laughs> told, like, express your feelings, too. And I got all caught up and confused with the shit. I'm like, all right, well, let me just tell you. All right, well, yeah, you know, um... You know, I hate when a bitch does this or that. And then I realized I was giving my weakness away. And I didn't realize. Right. right. And yeah. I, didn't realize, I didn't realize the shit until a bitch used that reverse psychology shit right back on me and pretended to be like the bitch I can't stand versus the bitch right. that I want. And once right. they know your weakness, man, is like, you're fucked. Right. And so you, you learn from every different relationship. Learn that shit, bro. Every every different one that's gonna hit you with um, something a, a quality that you disapprove of her, whether she takes forever to get ready, um, she only wants to show you affection when she's drunk, um, she's too busy to do stuff, but you as the man, you have to set the tone from the beginning and not tolerate unacceptable behavior from the start. If you don't do that from the start, it doesn't matter if you try to discipline her later, later on on, down the line, she will just not respect you because she's gotten away with this behavior over and over and over. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. But, like I said, I, I've been with them all, bro. I've been with the crazy ones. I've been with the educated ones. Mm-hmm. I've been with the ones where it's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, back in the bro days, they would cook for me. I mean, I remember this one girl real quick, you know, but, but before we wrap this up, I mean, she yeah. was literally an awesome chick, okay? I mean, I didn't have nothing. Um, but she would do all these things. And what I mean by this, like pick me up, take me to the gym, bring me food. (laughs) Sometimes, right. You know, spend the night, yada, 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 um, and do anything and everything that I asked her to do. But at the end of the day, like she had three kids and it's like, ah, uh, like, it, it, like, yeah, because you you kind of want somebody that's kind of matching your lifestyle. You, right. know? you kind of want somebody that's matching your lifestyle, and if you don't got no kids and you're free, and you're more, and you gotta, uh, I'm not trying to get involved mm-hmm. with this type of atmosphere. Nah, I want to, I want to build something different. I want to start it off different. If I'm gonna have kids, I want to build it because it it happened my way, not it's already happened. I f- I feel you. Most men do feel that way and right and so a lot of guys they get sucked into that situation to where oh my gosh you know she was with me in my low times but you you know as a man that you're gonna bounce back oh yeah you know, you're you're gonna oh, yeah. bounce back she's feeling you because she sees the potential out of you so she doesn't mind going the extra mile and she'll pay for gas i'm like damn you know what i mean like I just fucked the shit out of you, and you're giving me fifty dollars. Like what? <laughs> well, that's that's, that's your gas, that's your gas money to get home. I'm like, well, you know, I did drive. <laughs> yeah, that's I did drive. I did drive an hour to get <laughs> home right here. Oh shit! Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. 
Ja. Ah. It's a, oh, you drove her an hour over here, or you drove an hour? No, so like this girl that I was dating with back in the day, like she lived an hour away from me. Oh, and wow. she knew that. And so at that time, you know, I wasn't stable, um, you know, with the funds and everything. And she understood that she was still like, yo, I want to see you. And she was mad cool. And yeah, like one night she just gave me $50 to get back home because she knows my situation. I'm just like, whoa, like, I'm like, cool. But again, she saw me like as a long-term investment, like this is the guy that I want because I know he's going to bounce back on his feet. However, I just seen her as the jump off in the meantime, because she, she, she already has baggage. And as I value myself as a man, I'm not going to want to accept that baggage in the long term. But a lot of guys don't think like that because you know why? They're getting you pussy in the meantime, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I get you on that. You know, um, you know, it's I don't know, man. Like when you get older, you kind of like lose sort of sparks for women in a way. Like I, yeah. I don't know, maybe. You, do, do you gotta feel that way? Like I'm in, the, I'm in my late thirties. Right. Um, I mean, maybe it's just well, a real story, man. It just, it just. Uh, I guess you kind of get bored with it because it's like the same per repetitive cycle over and over with women and you kind of know what to expect but with with age comes wisdoms comes experience right. so the more women you deal with you are so on point and easy to figure out which type of women you're dealing with it becomes so easy fellas trust right. me to right. where it like it, it becomes easy but then it turns you off in a way because you know damn that's that's all that y'all have to offer you know what I'm saying? Like you start to look at what is valuable. And that's mm -hmm. when you're caught between a rock and a hard place. And you're saying, well, fuck, I know what to expect out of all these women that's coming my way. They say right. it's like they're programmed to say the same thing over and over again. So it's like, OK, I know which one are you. You I robot agent number 67 you said what's valuable as a man you're going your value increases as a man so you give that attention that you used to give to women to your money your time and your health i think those are the three key things that should never ever ever be compromised or sacrificed to validate a yeah. woman or have a woman in your life. So as long as you're doing those things, you know, on a continuous basis, then you can have a casual relationship. You can have even a long-term relationship, but you set the tone and let her know, like, look, I'm trying to build. I am not the dude that's going to be taking you out to all these places and doing these exotic things because my focus is trying to obtain this. You know, that's so, if you're a guy that's seeking a relationship. Go ahead. So, okay, all right. Relationship terms. Um, so, do you think equal is fair? Like, if you uh, if you guys don't both decide to, uh, you know, just do things equally, or do you think that, you know, well, you'll never do or, you'll you'll, or you'll, you'll never do anything equally. I mean, the only the only equal situation is. This is just my opinion. Call me crazy if you think I'm crazy, but that's fine. Oh, man, speak your mind, brother. <laughs> Shit. Right, right. The, only, mind, the only equal situation you're going to really get out of a woman is basically you tell her, look, we can live this lifestyle to where, you know, I'm going to play my role as a man. You know, I'm going to protect and provide. And you will never be lonely as a woman. See, a lot of guys don't understand that you don't need to have a woman in your life to complete you as a man, okay? Women are different. They need mm -hmm. that. That's why they have a lot of guy friends and friends that they call. And that's why I still have a lot of ex that are keeping in contact with me, even mm -hmm. though they have boyfriends and serious relationships, because they want that attention. 
So you think it's just more of a of a validation factor? It's not that oh, I want to be with you. But do you think some yes. women kind of what, straw what, men what into, into, into thinking that they want them just just for a validation ticket? Because it seems like to me that a lot of women prefer just to gain that validation from men instead of actually meeting them or seeing them. You know, they rather just women, hey, they, they they rather say, hey, follow me on Instagram. Oh, you got Snapchat? You know, it's it's never like, hey, back then it was like, yo, what's your number? Let me holler at you. Now it's like, what's your Snapchat? What's your IG? When, <laughs> like, women, 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 right. Women take all three currencies, bro. Time, mm -hmm. attention, and money. You're either one of those three dudes or you're all three of those guys. Mm. Period. So just because you get a girl Snapchat or whatever, there's mm. another guy that's sending her money. And then, then there's the other guy where he's just hitting and quitting. Damn. So you you choose the man you want to be in that woman's life. Okay? I want to be the guy that's just hitting it because that's all I really want. I don't need you for anything else. You know what I'm saying? So as you get older, you know, um, I know we got off the subject. We were supposed to talk about how you're in an equal situation. So let me go back to that. So the only way you're really in an equal situation is basically you got to determine the lifestyle that you want to live. So if you basically want to be that guy to where you want to, you know, travel do nice things and spoil one another, then you got to tell that girl, like, I'm going to be committed to you. This is the type of lifestyle that we're going to live, but we're not going to have any kids. Okay. Because I don't want to be caught up in the system. And, you know, it, it's, you know, the dynamics of the relationship is going to change, but I'm going to come home to you each and every single night. And if you're with that, then that's cool. But if you, if, if we're going to have kids, then I'm going to want you to be the stay-at-home mom because women working and trying to be a mother, the statistics show that it just does not work out, period. You know what I, you know what I honestly so you're gonna, You know what I honestly think? I don't mm -hmm. mean you up, bro. I'm just, I'm just going to flat out tell you this straight up, bro. How I honestly mm -hmm. think is like this. I don't even think that a woman, a woman or a man should come with an instruction guide. I say, fuck it. We should just be who we are with each other and be straight up real. Be honest. You know what I mean? If you guys can have that honesty between each other, then that shit will rock on. But if you don't have it and there's some bumps in between, then you got some problems. And from dealing with my past relationships, even my current one, one thing for sure I know, continuously need attention all the time that's just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's like so, the moment you, you're off with that attention is the moment that it's going to be a bitch for you to get her back the way you want her because you're constantly fighting for her attention that's that's just the way it is man that's relationships man right i i totally agree with that but then it goes back to your sanity how much time are you willing to give her attention when yeah. you're trying to build build as a man and as a couple? How much time are you going to focus on that? So you're mm -hmm. right. Honesty is very important. So that's that's where I tell you, as a man, you need to dictate it from the start. This is what I want, and this is what I expect my woman to do. And if you can't do this, then get out, get the hell out of my life. Because there will be a woman that will do that for you. But a lot yeah, of guys think you know. I'm, a lot of men think I'm crazy, which is cool. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys got, you got a military mindset, man. I'm just, I'm a, like, I'm a little bit more easy, man. I just, I just be like, listen, baby, mm -hmm. girl, like, listen, I just be like, I go, I go a little smooth with it. I just say, hey, listen, man. What's good? We gonna rock together or, or not? And most women love, me regardless bro because i'm like i'm goofy as shit and i make them laugh yeah. so it's like the wall shit it's kind of hard for a woman to really get really upset with me man because it's like when she's upset with me i do some goofy shit you know just to like be honest make her laugh and stuff yeah. like she'll get mad because she can't get mad 
but she'll get mad to her. She'll laugh. She's like, oh, you're so fucking stupid. Ah, you know what I'm saying? It starts laughing and shit. Right. And I'm like, there you go. Yeah, I'm so right. fucking stupid. But I still got a smile on your face. So, hey, it is what it is, man. Right. So, again, I, I, I totally feel you. And I feel the same way. I am a, a, a goofy guy, you know, in person. But for me, I, I've been through serious relationships. I have a casual relationship. I have a one-night stand. And at this point, you know, being in my mid-30s, I really value my peace and freedom. And I'm good moving forward just focusing on that, focusing on my retirement, and then maybe 15, 20 years, then I might want to settle down. But at that time, to be honest with you, bro, I don't think I want the, the responsibilities, to be honest. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe there was a place where, you know, most men could think about, like, okay, I have a family, have kids, but the way society is, man, just the way shit is, man. It's like, man, it's not even worth having kids anymore, bro. Like, it's not even worth having family. Like, shit is just all fucked up. Shit is so oh, fucked up right now. Right. So you have to find your purpose. What are things that you really want to do in life? And yeah. That's where men have to start, bro. So. Mm. But we got to continue this to part two. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, man, this was a good show, man. Thank you very much, QB Willie, for being on the show. Um, those of y'all who are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter if you want to follow QB, too. Go ahead and do so. Yeah. I mean, if you want to. QB you know, Willie, be on, on IG. You know, I'm, I'm not a YouTuber, but I make guest appearances. There you um, go. The link below. If you guys are interested in stocks, uh, I did a video on the Black Men's Travel Group, Stocks Over Thoughts. Go ahead and, and uh, take a look at that video in the link below. And if you're interested right. in stocks, I got a private uh, What's Up That uh, chat group, uh, basically educating brothers on the stock game. Hey, man, that stock game is something serious, man, because I got this app called Stash. And all that, you know what I mean? I made a couple of investments before in the past, but I haven't really been too hardcore with it. But um, right. I'm planning on doing so until these funds start kicking in. And then, because I'm, I'm looking at the stock market, I'm like, damn, that shit is getting mad cheap. But then it's like, it's like people have this faith, like, yeah, it's going to go up. That's what the stock market does. It goes really, really down whenever shit like this happened. Like, last time it went down like this was like, well, back in the, the, the recession, back in 2008, right? Yes, yeah, this week has been one of the best weeks I think they said since like 1934 or something. Oh, it's longer than that. Oh, shit. So we're worse. Yeah, well, this this whole week turns this games like it's been serious, man. Like since I'm a traveler, man, I picked up a, a couple of hotel stocks. I'm just like, yeah. Bro, like big time. Yeah, but you know what it is? It's just I think what it is is people are in panic right now. Mm -hmm. People are not sure what's going to happen. Like we keep getting told, oh, we should be able to go back to work on the on the on the on the, on the uh, two weeks and three weeks and then four weeks. And it is it seems like this this pandemic doesn't really seem like it wants to slow down too much, but I'm hearing certain things, you know, like I'm hearing that it's slowing down, but I'm I'm not an advocate for news and mainstream media. You know that already. And um, I, I don't like mainstream media. I don't trust in mainstream media. Uh, I think a lot of the news lie a lot about a lot of certain things. Um, but in certain circumstances, it's like, well, who do you get your news from if everybody's talking bullshit? And so it's like, you got no choice but to kind of tune into it because rather we like the news or not, we all want to get back to work. Fair enough, right? Yeah. yeah everybody everyone, everyone wants to get back to a normal life. But how yeah, I learned, normal life. you appreciate times where when you have multiple streams of income, one doesn't come in, you got the other, and you got several others. So yeah. I'm, you I'm gotta show me how, how long have you been doing uh how long have you been in, in stock, man? How long have you been doing stock? So I've been doing stock right, probably about three, three and a half years. Oh, okay. So you're so, pretty good at go ahead, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, one of, one of my boys that I'm, I'm really close with, he's actually an accountant uh, for a company in Santa Barbara. And he's just like, yo, man, like, you got to look at his stocks. Like, he showed me his games, and I just kind of took his lead. I was stubborn like everyone else. I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. But, yo, it, it feels good to wake up in the morning, and you wake up, you're just like, oh, my gosh, like, this this is when I'm making it. I'm not, I'm not even doing anything. I just woke up. <laughs> wow. So that's my validation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. Um, That's crazy, man. I mean, because uh, it's, it just can't, it just makes you think, man. Because I mean, I think, you know, getting stocks right now, I think is a great thing if you do have an extended income and, you know, you're able to take care of the things you have to take care of this month for your bills. And, you know, depending if you have other sorts of income, I mean, it, it just kind of sucks right now because, you know, most people who are not essential workers, you know, they're not working right now. So they're kind of like, fuck, they got to rely on uh, the government to help them, which is really you know what I'm saying? It's really never unheard of before. And and not just that, you you got some places that are hiring and then they're on a hiring spree. They're on a hiring freeze. So at the same time, it's a clusterfuck. And then you got all, all these getting on uh, unemployment all at the same time and people are freaking out. So it's like they have money. They do. But at the same time, they're like, well, what do I do with whatever I have left in my hand or in my bank? Do I take a risk and flip it and lose it all? Or do I take a risk and flip it and make it into multi stacks? So it's really hard right now. And knowing that the fact that it, I'm looking at the stock exchange and it's going up pretty high. Yeah, it is. And so there's always going to be opportunities in the future. Uh, I tell, you know, because a lot of guys have been hitting me up like, oh my gosh, I just opened up this app. Like, what stocks do I should I invest in all this? And I'm like, I'm like, time out, bro. Like, take care of your situation, save money, you know, have yeah. have hard cash, and when the next opportunity comes, you're prepared. Period. Um, a lot of guys think that okay, if I just start investing stocks, and they can do day trading, which is fine. I'm not a day trader. I invest long term, um, but this is the long term plan. We're talking 10, 20, 25 years to where you're living off of dividend stocks, getting paid monthly, annually for the rest of your life. And there are. Well, can you do that? Can you do that? Can you do that at a shorter time? Yeah, you can. You just got to continue investing in that same stock, you know? But the problem, the problem that happens is everyone wants to go where the money is and you can do that, but you have to rock with that stock during the good times and bad times. Cause what goes up yeah. comes down. You got to just what leave, comes, it, in what you comes gotta down. leave it in there. Right. And a lot of people get impatient, <laughs> you know, like, Oh my gosh, I'm on loss. $250 in one day. It's like, Everyone's yeah, hurting. bro. That happened to me before when I put it. I put in one hundred and fifty dollars, bro. I lost that shit in one day. I, <laughs> I mm -hmm. donated that. I donated all of that to the cannabis fund, man. The Aurora. Right. That, well, um, so cool. Yeah, I got that, but uh, it's like it's it's, it's kind of popular now. So you know, it's one of those uh, they they provide for you know marijuana supplements. For people who I also donated, I also got, I'm saying donated, but I actually got some shares with uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, and also, you know, some with, uh, you know, dealing with gummy, gummy, uh, marijuana gummies and shit, like these gummy bears that's supposed to be like really popular. So it's been going up, but I'm saying to myself, like, damn, how long is it going to go keep going up for? So you, you say this, I'm okay. Then, we just keep, and you're like it's going up, it's going up. Keep going, keep going. And in that moment, that shit goes crashing down. It's like fuck. <laughs> why didn't I cash it out while I had the chance? Have, has that ever happened to you? 
Um, yeah, that okay. happened to me. Uh, I'm trying to think of this not Well, currently, I'm going through with Carvana, which is owned by Martin Cuban. It's been like, what, like I want to choke it sometimes because it'll go up like extremely high. And then the next day, it will go back like extremely low. But yeah. the sweat stock game is, you know, you got to be able to control your emotions and you, you got to control your money. So yeah. you just have to hold on to those shares. And now I actually love it when the stock market goes down because this is discount season. This is 80% off. I look at it as a sell. This is 80% off. 60% off, 50% off, and then boom, within a few months, it's going to go back up and it's going to go higher. So that's that's the thing what a lot of people don't understand that when the stock market goes back down, it's going to go back up to where it was before, and then it's going to continue to go up in the future. It'll never go down and continue to go down for the I, long term. I got a question for you, man, because I'm just getting into the whole stock thing because I don't know not a master on it or anything like that. It's a new yeah. ball game for me. I'm still mastering this video editing right. processing. I mean, people say that, damn, you, you're doing a good job. Like you got everything set. Bro, it's never going to stop, man. Cause there's always something new and something that I want to figure out. This is like ancient history to some people who are like, you know, got a, like, uh, that's on that 4k ultra <laughs> visual and shit. You know what I mean? So, I'm trying to climb up there, bro. I'm trying to climb the mountain. So this, this, oh, you can never stop learning from shit. That's one thing I've learned about life. You can never stop learning. And there's some stuff too, man. I'm gonna, you know, I'll, I'll hit you up in the DMs and we'll talk about. But you know, it's just related to some stocks and stuff because um, I, I, I seriously do want to learn a lot more from you and how you format certain things and also trading because trading has always confused me, man. I, I always get scared. And kind of skeptical on training because I'm like, shit, I'm not too good with trading. Because I mean, you got to be really good with math too. And you also got to be like, you got to know what you're doing. Because if you don't know what you're doing when you're trading, you could lose, you trading, you could lose so much. Right. It's definitely more, more riskier. Um, and, and again, you want to see. You're right. Mm-hmm. right. So, yeah, we, we, can, we can top it up more on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right man well qb it was great having you my man thank you for joining the show it was a <laughs> good crazy conversation <laughs> very lightful um yeah man and um you know hopefully we, we could rock it again with you and uh radical latino okay no doubt bro yeah man all right i'll get at you later all right all right bro we out <laughs>